What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're talking where do bass go after the spawn and the best baits to catch them. So this is the second time I filmed this video today. Uh, just got home, checked the footage, and believe it or not, no audio. So round two, earlier I went around, kind of pointed, showed, I was on a completely different lake, but uh, it is what it is, right? So we're gonna roll with the punches. Post-spawn fishing. You might think post-spawn, my fish are pre-spawn. Uh, and depending on where you are in the country, you, you are right, right? We actually have fish in all three phases. We have pre-spawn, spawn, and some post-spawn. We have fish that spawn the last couple moons, new moon and full moon. So we have fish in all three stages. It happens really, really fast. Now, what's cool about the post-spawn, once these fish are up shallow, they did their thing, now they're hungry. And you already know their transition points. If you were fishing pre-spawn, you know, as those fish came from where they were wintering and they were transitioning to the backs of coves, spawning bays, spawning flats, you know where they stopped along the way as they made their transition, now just reverse it. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, the highland reservoirs, lowland reservoirs, natural lakes slash ponds, and uh, river systems, tidal systems, and creeks because honestly the fish are gonna transition a little bit differently and different baits will work better in the different types of fisheries. So let's start off with highland reservoirs because honestly I think they're they're kind of the easiest and, and let me let me explain why. In my mind highland reservoirs typically have cleaner water, more visibility. Uh, typically you know, your highland reservoirs have your long river arms, lots of channels, lots of creek channels, lots of little bays, secondary points, and typically the water fluctuates the most out of any of the types of reservoirs. You know, out on the west coast, some of the reservoirs out there would drop 100, 150 feet in a, in a day, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a season, and then fill back up in the winter and, and so forth. But clear water, these fish, in highland reservoirs are all about rock. So we've taught in the past that after the spawn, half the fish stay shallow, half the fish go deep. And that is true on lowland reservoirs. On highland reservoirs, because they are uh, so much more steep, the, 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 the back coves are typically more, uh, have more contour to them. Uh, you get less grass. They're not as t gradual tapering, if that makes sense. And, and there's exceptions to all these rules, but for the most part, you have steep bluffs, you got real deep canyons and real deep creek channels. Well, the light penetrates, but not deep enough for the grass to grow. So very few of the uh, backs of cuts will actually have grass. And that's what these bass are looking for. If they're staying shallow, it's all about the grass. So we'll talk about that in the lowland reservoirs, but highland reservoirs, rock. If you can find rock piles, uh, big boulders, main lake points with chunk rock, that is where those fish are gonna transition to. They're coming from the backs of the bays. Now I'm, I keep pointing back here because uh, we're actually on Chickamauga, uh, TVA system, Tennessee River, but some of these backwaters go for miles. So it's actually, this can be considered a lowland reservoir back here. It's its own lake back here. I mean, you can spend a week back here just fishing and never even make it out to the, the main river channel. <clears throat> Highland reservoirs, clear water, those fish get kind of spooky in that clear water and they're gonna pull out. Now, one exception for those fish, standing timber. If you find a real deep cut that goes in the back to a spawning bay, as those fish make their way along the shoreline, some of those fish will actually pull out to the middle and suspend in the standing treetops. You know, you can throw top water, you can throw glide baits, swim baits, all of these things, all those baits will work to try and get those fish to commit 
out of the tops of the trees. You can actually catch fish, I mean, over 100 feet of water. They're just gonna suspend 15, 20 feet down, looking up. The other thing with clear water, the color line. Pay attention to the color line. You know, fish in clear water use everything to their advantage that they can, especially shadows, great ambush points, and the color line. What the color line is, is when you're looking out on a point, you can see where the dark water meets the light water. And what you're seeing is where light is penetrating to the bottom and you can actually see bottom versus not. That dark line is the color line and that's where those fish are gonna sit. So if you're fishing a main lake point or a secondary point, fish the color line, fish it with your swim bait, fish it with your jig, your drop shot, whatever it may be, top water. Fish that color line because that's where those fish are going to hold. Now, if there is a brush pile up shallow or there's something that they can, uh, an isolated grass patch, something they can get in, by all means fish that too. But for the most part, the clear water fish are going to be out there on the color line. So once you make your way out to your secondary points, your main lake points, a lot of those fish eventually are going to be out there to summer, right? You know, out here on the TVA, it's called ledge fishing. Those fish are gonna move out into that current. We'll talk about that here shortly. But uh, those fish on the Highland Reservoirs are gonna stay out there. They're typically gonna school up. So if you can find that good rock, you can find the good bait, if you can find isolated grass pot patches, that is key. Now, a couple other things that I want you guys to consider during this transition period. And like I said, post-spawn, you know, you could have fish in pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn, all three phases like we do. So theoretically, you can catch fish coming in for pre-spawn in the same spot, catch fish that are post-spawn, right? They're going to cross. They're going to pass each other, going to the spawning bays and going to where they're going to summer um, can be a lot of fun. So those deep water fish, a crankbait. Tactical DD crank and a Strike King 6XD. Those are my two favorite crankbaits. Now we're not talking the big extra deep Magnum crankbaits. Right now we're talking about just the deep cranks and we're gonna stick fairly natural. Shad colors, you know, we're not gonna get into the chartreuse blue yet. That's more of a summer thing. But a jig, a swim bait, uh, you know, obviously you can fish your drop shots, tubes, that sort of stuff. But for me, it's all about reaction. These fish are hungry. They're looking to feed up. And a lot of times they're schooled up, like I said. So throwing that crankbait one after another, you can, once you catch up one, you can catch a lot. It's like we got a wave runner race going on out here. But, uh, so that is Highland Reservoirs. The other thing I want to talk about, shad spawn. Two things I want to talk about. Shad spawn and fry garters. Uh, now this is going to apply to all the fisheries that have shad. Uh, early morning, late night, low light conditions, there's a thing called the shad spawn. Halfway, about halfway through the bass spawn, the shad start their spawn as well. So if you get out early enough, a lot of times you could take advantage. It doesn't matter if it's a highland reservoir, a lowland reservoir, whatever. If there's shad in your lake, you can catch those fish super shallow. Two best baits to catch those fish. Actually, I got three. I got four. I'm gonna give you four. Four baits to catch those fish. Number one, it's gonna be the spinner bait. Bladed, obviously. Lots of flash, lots of vibration. Those fish are up shallow. They are chasing those shad and they are feeding up. A spinnerbait. It's really, really hard to beat a spinnerbait. Underspin. And then some kind of fluke, either nose rigged. I'll show you this guy real quick. You guys have seen this trick before, using that screw lock and then nose rigging the, hoop, the fluke through the, the uh, centering pin, and then a top water. That Matt Shad Pop Max is an awesome, awesome popper. But the Shad spawn, early morning, those fish are up shallow. Even, you know, they're, even in that clear water, those Highland Reservoir fish, they're gonna be up shallow, eating that, uh, you know, feeding up on those Shad. As that sun gets high, 
they're gonna back off that shad spawns done and uh, you know you can go put it on the trailer or you can wait and really look for your shade lines a lot of highland reservoirs have real steep bluff walls so if you put the sun to your face and you're fishing a steep bank right here a lot of times there's going to be a couple feet of shade line at the base of that shade at that that bluff wall get along parallel to that and throw your top water throw your weightless senko that sort of stuff um, and you'll be surprised what it'll eat middle of the day in that really small uh, shade just like the color line like I explained those fish get out there where the Sun doesn't penetrate they sit on that color line they look into the shallows look into that lit, lit up area to ambush their prey same thing with the shadows on the bluff walls overhangs that sort of stuff enough about Highland reservoirs let's talk about lowland reservoirs um, lowland reservoirs uh, for me it's 50 50 like I said earlier Highland reservoirs, most of your fish go back out secondary points, main lake points, all about rock, some some standing timber. Uh, lowland reservoirs, it's all about grass. You know, typically in lowland reservoirs, you have bays that just go, they're a lot bigger, miles, right? I mean, this is less than four feet for two miles. So you get enormous grass flats. That's where you're gonna throw a frog. That's where you're gonna throw a horny toad, uh, a weedless Texas rig fluke. These fish are gonna stay in the grass. You know, 50% of them, I don't know for sure, about half are gonna go back out to the main river, main lake, and they're gonna get on um, the ledges, right? That's gonna be the ledge bite. But here in the back, it's all grass, okay? That is power fishing, that's frog fishing, that is top water, so much fun. So, where do you start? Lowland reservoirs, a lot of, a lot of lowland reservoirs out here, there's a lot of water movement. They, they, that river, they pull that water. Um, sometimes it fluctuates water depth, but uh, here on Chickamauga, now that we're kind of summer pool, it'll be this depth, this elevation for several months, so they won't mess with it. But uh, you get closer out to the to the main river. There's going to be current, and that's where you're going to set up on those current seams, on the shell beds, and on the ledges. But back here, like I said, it's grass. So you're looking for the anomalies. When you got a mile and a half, two miles of grass, where do you start? Just like the color line on the Highland reservoirs, go out to the deepest edge where that. Where that light can't penetrate anymore, that grass stops growing, that's where the biggest fish are gonna sit. Got access to deeper water, but they're right on that grass edge. So you can throw wake baits, you can throw big top waters, buzz baits, frogs. Um, if there's isolated grass patches, so out here, say this bay is kind of clean, but over here you have two, maybe 10 or 12 foot diameter grass patches, the green, real nice grass, the fish are gonna be in that. So that's where you're gonna use your flipping baits, your your weightless senko, your fluke, um, your, your your flipping punch jigs, that sort of stuff. But uh, it's all about grass. You know, lowland reservoir fishing for me, I get excited because you can throw square bills, you can stay shallow, you can really really power fish, and uh, man, it's really hard to beat the frog. Now you get on the grass line, like I said, you can throw top waters. Now this applies to your Highland Reservoirs as well. You, know, you get on that color line, you can throw a big walking bait. This is that Gunfish 117. Um, great little great little bait. You guys know how much we love that shower blows. We talked about it a ton the last couple years. This is a great alternative, kind of the same shape, a little different face. Uh, do change out the split ring on the front, but uh, fairly inexpensive, and these things catch them. Um, so throw your walking baits on that grass edge. Now typically this time of the year, even though the water is warming up, those fish are aggressive, I don't start off with a fast moving uh, top water bait. I don't really start with a whopper plopper or a buzz bait. I wait and see if I can speed up to that. I'll typically start with the frog, typically a popping frog or a popper. Something that I can pick my cast, throw that bait out there, and just move it. I'm not bringing that bait to me. I'm not covering a lot of distance. I'm staying in that strike zone because that's where those fish are gonna hold. So again, lowland reservoirs, it's all about grass. One other thing that I wanted to talk about, I wanna talk about it in the uh, in the Highland Reservoir part section, 
but going to backtrack a little bit, is fry garters. Obviously, you're coming off the spawn. You're going to have the males sticking around guarding the fry. Once those eggs hatch, you get the little babies swimming around. Now you have those males that are fry garters, and you can catch them on flukes and top water and stuff. Um, but let them go. You know, let them guard the fry. That way your, your fishery gets a good, good spawn. But uh, there are fry garters that you can catch. And again, we talked about that shad spawn. Man, I don't know what the deal is. Camera just turned off twice. Uh, so lowland reservoirs, it's all about the grass. Highland reservoirs, it's all about the rock. Now, if you're gonna go deep on the lowland reservoirs, like I, t I said earlier, here on Chick, obviously you have that the main lake, the river, if you will. Uh, it's all about current. When they're generating current, those fish are gonna be out there on the ledges, and that's where you catch them with the jigs. The, uh, the wobble heads, crankbaits. Crankbait is probably my number one. Like I said, same thing Highland Reservoirs, getting out there, deep water. Those fish are gonna school up on the, on the shell beds, on the, on the rock, on those ledges. If you can find a nice current transition and a hard spot next to the ledge, the break off to the, uh, to the river channel, that's where those fish are gonna stage up. So we talked about lowland reservoirs, talked about highland reservoirs. We've talked about the shad spawn and fry garters. Let's talk about uh, a natural lake. Natural lake, and we're gonna put ponds in there as well. Again, natural lakes, uh, typically from what I've experienced, they don't have a lot of change throughout the year in, in elevation, water level elevation. Uh, yeah, in the summertime they kind of drain lower, but it's not like you have a a big dam just to clear out a bunch of water and, and crash the, the elevation. So uh, for the most part, there there's not a lot of, um, of change. So what you want to look for, you want to look for little subtle uh, depth changes. Maybe it's a little creek channel that's going into the back of a bay. Maybe it's last year was a, a drought year and you had low water levels. So now the water, the lake's down eight, 10 feet and now the waves are hitting the shoreline, the old shoreline, now with the lake up, eight to 10 feet out here, you have a nice little break where those waves eroded the shoreline um, for that drought year. You know, that sort of stuff. I know Clear Lake back home on the West Coast had it, but um, for the most part, a gra grass again, guys, lively grass. And just like the grass in the lowland reservoirs, you're looking for the anomalies. If you're up shore, uh, fishing the shoreline, look for a tule point that sticks out farther in the lake than the rest, or a grass edge, or you know, an isolated grass patch. You know, out there sometimes, I mean, you could be a mile offshore fishing the edge of grass in 12 foot, uh, and you can throw, you know, your big top waters, your frogs, your buzzbaits, that sort of stuff. So a lot like the grass in the backs of, of the lowland reservoirs, those natural lakes, like I said, don't have a lot of rock piles and stuff going on unless you go a little bit deeper. Um, for the most part, it's all about the grass. So again, swim jig is key in that. I didn't talk about it in the lowland reservoir stuff, but section, but uh, a swim jig is great. It has, uh, the California swim jig has a no jack hook in it. Put your favorite swim bait on there and uh, you can just bring that stuff right through the grass. Uh, and when you get one of those bites, you won't forget it. But um, natural natural lakes, ponds, same thing. Ponds, you know, fish that deeper grass edge towards that, that, that color line uh, where those fish can go a little bit deeper and ambush either out of the grass or up. But uh, you guys, natural lakes really are all about the grass as well. Last but not least, let's talk about river systems and creeks. You know, a lot of guys like to fish creeks this time of year. Uh, it's a blast. I love doing it out here in Tennessee. You know, most people will fish the pools. That's typically your deepest area of the creek. Um, where we like to focus this time of the year is going to be at the tops of the pools where the rapids or the riffles are coming in. A lot of times those fish will get right up in that, that last little riffle and they'll sit back at the top of that pool. And that's where those biggest, biggest fish are going to hang. Or right there, if there's a big boulder or a lay down, a branch in the water, something that creates a current 
kind of a current break or a current seam, those fish will get right behind that and they can shoot out and eat something that, you know, that's bringing the new, the new food for them, new nutrients. So um, that is where we focus this time of the year in the creeks. River, same thing, just a lot bigger scale. Get out on the river, look for your current seams, look for your breaks and look for your hard bottom. And that's those, well, those fish, they're gonna position on that transition. Uh, and that's that really is key. That's what you're talking about, or that's what they're talking about when you hear a ledge bite. Those fish are moving out into the main current and uh, they stage right there on the lip before it breaks off to the current channel. But uh, guys, there it is. That is where fish are gonna go. You know, you could be pre-spawn right now, you could be mid-spawn, or you could be post-spawn, or all three. Totally depends on your fishery, but these baits right here, depending on the different types of fisheries you're fishing, will catch fish. Don't forget about the early shad spawn, and don't forget about the color line or the shadows. They are key. As always, guys, we appreciate you watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, and we will see you on the next video.